there are five mistakes that Amazon sellers are making with library sales and I'm gonna cover them in this video my name is Manny and this is Manny's book bag what's going on everybody it is Manny and I am back with another video I am getting ready and gearing up for a very busy sourcing weekend. My children are going back to school in the middle of the next week and I want to prepare by getting as many books as I can this weekend and shipping them out so that I can enjoy Monday and Tuesday with them before all the hectic stuff starts back up. So I've scheduled a crazy weekend of sourcing which includes two library sales, one of which is a couple hours away from me. What I plan on doing is getting as many books as I can, getting stuff out the door, enjoying time with my children, and having them go back to school on Wednesday. But before I can leave the house for the morning, I gotta make sure I have everything I need. So there you have it, I'm good to go. I have everything that I need to have a successful day. And uh, that is actually the number one thing that I wanna talk about as far as mistakes that sellers make with library sales. Number one, they don't plan correctly. You don't have the stuff you need or you get caught off guard. You're gonna notice that I didn't just bring my Bluetooth uh, wireless earbuds I also brought a backup pair. I didn't just bring uh, one scanner. I bought three fully charged scanners in case there's any sort of unforeseen technological issues. I also brought multiple power banks. I brought my armband because I know that in competitive environments, I prefer to use that. I also made my coffee. I have my water for the day. But the biggest issue with poor planning is not showing up on time. And what I mean by on time is really, really early. And to show up earlier as the sale increases in size. If it's going to be a high demand sale, it is not unheard of to be there several hours early, if not even some people that camp out the night before. Now, I'm not gonna go to those extremes, but I would definitely say that for uh, just a regular local sale, I'm still gonna be there an hour before the doors open. I wanna be the first one in line or the second one in line. You have to have that mentality that you wanna be first. If you ain't first, you're last. So make sure you plan correctly. And that includes the stuff that I did the night before. I got a full tank of gas. I went to the bank. I withdrew money. I've got cash in my pocket to spend. So number one, make sure you plan thoroughly so that you can have a successful day. But uh, it's getting to about that time, and I got to hit the road. Oh, and one last thing about being prepared. Your phones. Uh, make sure that your device is fully charged. If you are working with a downloadable database, and you should be, make sure you got a fresh download in there so you got the freshest data possible. And one last thing, when you download your database, test it. Make absolutely sure that it took. The last thing you want to do is show up at a sale and have no database at all. And here I am about 45 minutes early. I'm at the place and uh, I'm not without something to do because I'm talking to you. So it gives me a chance to talk about the second mistake that I see sellers make at library sales. And that is not attending the preview sale. I see the question pop up all the time. They'll say something like, well, they want to charge us $25 at the door just to go in. Do it! Or how about this one? Uh, the library sale is an hour to an hour and a half away from my home. Do it! Or here, this is a good one too. Uh, it's only advertised for about 5,000 books. Is that a big enough sale to even go? Just do it! Just go to the preview sale. If you want the chance to get your hands on the best books that that source has available, you have to be there. And tying into number one, if it's competitive, you certainly have to be pretty early because you don't want to be waiting for a bunch of people to get through before you get a shot at them. 
and take advantage of your competitor's mentality. If something like $25, which is a business expense, is keeping your competitors from showing up, that's where you need to be. So mistake number two is definitely not attending preview sales. The best books are there. Now similar to number two, mistake number three that I see a lot of sellers talking about is not going to bag sales. Not too long ago, bag sales were considered a phenomenal way to stock up on really sellable inventory for very cheap. If sellers complain about preview sales because they charge too much money for you to get in and it's too much of an investment, well, the opposite is going to be the case for bag sales. They're going to be among your least expensive source for books when it comes to libraries and thrifting. The argument is that you're not going to find enough books because sellers have already been through those books over and over, so there's nothing left. Erroneous! That is not true. I can't tell you how many times I have gone to a place where I know that books have been gone through over and over and over again, and there should be nothing left. And I walk out of there not just with mildly profitable books i walk out of there with straight up bangers there's some things you need to remember there are plenty of sellers out there that don't necessarily know what they're doing there's plenty of sellers out there that are working with triggers that they don't understand or that are not set properly as well so they're overlooking a lot of valuable books there's books that can't be scanned and booksellers are not just notoriously cheap we are also as a group collectively notoriously lazy Many sellers won't even stop to go back and do manual lookups. They will just keep going. So valuable books just sit there and wait for somebody that's willing to take the extra step. And then ultimately, if you're like me and you're willing to make $2 on a book that you get for 10 or 15 cents, then there, that's also a great day to get some volume-based sourcing done as well. So please, if you're thinking about not doing bag sales, make sure that you have a really good reason not to. And if you haven't, give them a shot. All right, well, moving right along, the fourth mistake, and this is a major, major mistake that so many sellers make in terms of library sales is not venturing out far enough away from home. We see constant comments from people about how they have such a hard time finding a good number of sellable books. And then when you dig a little deeper and you ask them about their trade area and how far out they go from their home, you find out that they're not really venturing out very far at all. Some time ago, I made a video about what it would take to net $100,000 as a bookseller. I'm gonna go ahead and link it up in the YouTube card for you, but here's a hint. It involved quite a bit of travel, it involved a lot of time, it involved a lot of miles on your car, and I go into how to create a trade area map for yourself to really help you plan routes so that when you do go further out, it's not just for one place. You can actually create routes so you can source on the way there and so that you can source on the way back. So let's say you go to a library sale and it's not so good. Not all is lost because you're gonna be sourcing in other spots the entire way. You get to write off your mileage, you get to expand your trade area map, and you get to find more books. And this doesn't just apply to library book sales. For those of you that are following strictly the thrift store model, the same thing applies. You have to go further out if you're going to be successful in this business, because how do you buy more books? You have to find more books. Well, folks, I made it back home. I survived the day, and uh, I definitely hit my goal, but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I am tired. But I'm not going to wrap the day up without talking about the fifth mistake that I find sellers are making with library sales. Now, it just so happened that at that first library sale that I was at, uh, something happened that actually proves my point. I want to talk about how we behave when we are finished at that library sale. We got the adrenaline going. We probably have a route, so we already have our minds set on the next place that we're gonna go to, and we just get out of there with our books. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, networking. There's not a lot of uh, building rapport with the organizers and the volunteers, and a lot of times we don't ask for more books. 
The fifth mistake that sellers make at the library sales is not asking the people in charge if they have more books available that perhaps they couldn't put out. If they have a storage area where there's books that maybe you could buy to help support their mission. At that first library sale, I could tell right away that we had a good rapport going. They were very friendly, especially toward me. I don't know why. I was definitely the first person in the door and we were very, very chatty. I flat out asked them if they had more books that, uh, you know, they couldn't find room for if there were books that were about to get uh, recycled or books that, you know, people had already passed on. And this is what happened. I just wanted to take a quick minute to talk to you folks. I, this is going to be very brief because I have to be discreet. If you take the time to talk to people and you ask them how you can help them, if you ask specific questions, like if they have extra books that they don't know what to do with or that people have passed on, they will let you in the back room. Now, this is from the first sale of the weekend, but I just want to show you what I'm working with here. Basically, I'm in the library's storage room. Now that I'm done with their sale, I, I'm just gonna start to scan out everything over here. All you have to do is ask. If you buy your stuff and you leave, I consider that to be the fifth mistake that I see happening all the time because you never know what other opportunities you are going to get. This just turned out to be an immediate example of that, and I gotta share, but I gotta go. So you see folks, all you have to do is ask and be nice. Take a human interest in other people and you'll be surprised how often they return that favor. I was able to collect an extra 30 books, some of which were textbooks that I need to get into the warehouse pronto. Now I know that there are way more than five mistakes that sellers make at library sales. So here's the question of the day. What are some other common errors that you can think of that sellers are making at library sales? Go ahead and put in your comments below because like I said, there's a whole lot more than five. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see me make more videos like this one, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. If you haven't liked this video yet, go ahead and teach that like button a lesson. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and tap on that book bag right there. And while you're in there, don't forget to tap that bell. That's going to give you notifications every time I drop a new video. Until next time, let's go make some money.